My comment is how exciting this work is. And what I was going to say, I think you, I had no idea that you guys were in the middle of doing this. What <coughs> I was going to suggest is let's, how can we do this here? But it seems that you're really on board that. So we're it's really, really exciting. Building on what Heather and Ellen are doing too. Their, their grant um, is looking at a lot of the economic. Mm -hmm. Well, so in the, the CERF funding, that I'm completing up now where we did a lot of trialing of heritage varieties. So we got the results of that and I would be very honored to contribute the seeds, you know, that we got data on because we were screening hundreds of varieties, open replicated trials, and it would be wonderful to share those with other farmers under your mm -hmm. guidance. Yeah, we should talk. Um, yeah, let's go. Okay, around. I just want a little clarification about the terminology of grain and cereal grain, because rice is a grain too, mm -hmm. and we've proved that rice is twice as productive as wheat. And rice as an introduction is not a reintroduction like wheat, um, and also probably because just the culture of this area is more European than um, is that actually a rice eating culture? I don't know, but um, I find I'm glad that the Northern Grain Growers Association is uh, including rice and other grains in their grains. But whenever I hear the word grain, um, it's usually only referred to wheat and not rice. And rice is a commercial crop now; it is being sold in Vermont. Do you want to answer? Uh, um, Is this this project is focused on wheat, emmer, and corn. Uh, the small grains program at Cornell also does barley, oats. So it's small grains. I don't usually see rice included with that, but we don't want to exclude it as a grain. And corn is also considered a grain, and we're not really including Could it. Could in the future? Could rice be included in the future? Why do we think that? In this in project? No, in the Cornell. In Cornell. No, the grain section. Uh, well, uh, yeah, there is a rice breeding program. Yeah. But she's a breeder. She's not an ag ag agronomist. Oh, yeah, we're the breeding group, too. Oh, <laughs> so we're working yeah. with farmers on the, oh. on the, on the agronomics. Uh, we're working with Mike Davis at the Northern New York Research Farm on the agronomics. I'm kind of presenting the whole program, but David and I are definitely from the breeding side of things. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I really want um, everyone's comments to be recorded. That's why I'm moving around. Uh, just to follow up, the dehauler work that's being done, I encourage the group to include rice in the dehauling because the rice dehauling equipment is very similar to some of the research they're doing on the grain dehauling equipment. Yeah, I, I, I agree because it's smaller. It's starting out as a small crop with small farmers, like a tenth of an acre, an acre, two acres. And we need the small equipment. Yes. How do you dehaul? Yeah. How are you dehauling yours? Uh, we have a, a, a treadle, a foot pedal dehauler, which we luckily got. It was from Japan. It's an old style one. It works very, very well. That may be of value to your team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we have a dehauler too. It's that actually we not the dehauler. It's a oh, thresher. Oh, thresher. I'm talking about okay. dehauler we purchased from Japan. But well, you do have a dehauler that you look at. Yes. Good. Oh. oh, Elizabeth. The Association of Food Co-ops in New England did an assessment of how much, I think it was, oats, all of the co-ops sold together, and how much of that was imported from other areas. And then they turned to farmers to say, could you grow this for us here? Have you thought of building markets in that way? I think it's the post-harvest processing of oats, right? And I don't, so I don't know. Klaus, I've talked to you the most about oats and what are the uh, challenges. If you don't mind, I think. The challenge on oats is this similar but more complicated than with the other hulled grains, and that's when you dehull oats, it starts to spoil. 
and it will only keep a week unless it's been stabilized with steam or with some kind of a, a roasting, you know, some kind of a killing process with heat. Uh, the alternative to that would be to grow hollis oats, and the drawback on the hollis oats has been the equipment to separate the throwbacks. And it seems that every year you keep seed back from hollis oats, you get a much higher percentage of hulls than you did the generation before. Uh, that said, we do have the technology to take hollis oats and get it clean enough to use. Uh, it's just been a, a lack of will to put it all together. I just realized you about building the market. Ah, uh, that's what I just realized too. Your question is needed for the market. You have, but you have to have both. You have to be able to bring it to a marketable condition in order to build the market. And we haven't, we haven't had the will to bring these products all into marketable condition so that the market can be built from that. But the um, method, which I think you're pointing out, is of using some of our cooperative associations to do market. Based, uh, you need to do the two have to coordinate sir, yes. to work. And I, I have to say, is on the farm to bakery project, we immediately, and farm to factory, which was food processors, we immediately got people wanting oats because of granola mostly, and people thinking they want oats because there's so many small processing companies doing granola. So that's why I did, sorry, I jumped to the oats, but the point is about using our cooperatives as uh, marketers. They're going to look at the demand at green market um, and also do some um, surveys of consumers to try to establish how much demand there actually might be. Uh, the mills that are larger scale but local, um, I think they say they could use at least twice as much locally grown flour if the quality is there. So. Like Champlain Valley is asking for more. Um, Saturday there are a few sessions, I think, on local markets, and tomorrow there are, Joel Steigman's coming. Uh, he has a mill in Pennsylvania, so they would be better able to answer that than I am. But we're hoping to do uh, some fairly detailed economic analysis um, with the project that would look at market demand. Heather, do you want to come up here? Well, I was just going to say that. I mean, that's a that's a big question, this whole market demand question. And I know um, the survey that was done by the food co-ops, co and there was a smaller one done in Vermont. What was really interesting to me was what the this perception of there's a large amount of oats needed. And I, if I remember correctly, we looked at the numbers, and it was really a small amount when you're talking about a, on a you know a farm, and the amount that was was needed um, could be grown on you know, 20 acres or something. Um, so, and, and it wasn't a complete, complete survey, but you know, it sort of really puts it into perspective, like how much, what is the actual demand? And nobody has really sort of figured that out. And I think it was like, 10, I wanna say it was 5,000 or 10,000 pounds of oats. That's not very much, you know, from a, from a farmer's perspective. And so is there enough to build the infrastructure that's actually needed to process oats and, and so there's so many questions that need to be answered um, and there's you know these great plant breeders and agronomists and, um, and and we need those those sort of people that are figuring out the market demand and they're not we don't have them yet <clears throat> and we're conducting a sort of a smaller market demand study in Vermont and the Northern Grain Growers Association did get a grant to do that but I also still feel like the data that that is being collected is somewhat limited. And so I, I really feel like that's kind of our next step to, to truly figure out, you know, what 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 is the potential? And and from a baker from bakers' perspectives, um, what we hear anyway is that they're only going to use so much whole wheat flour, so much bolted flour, and what mostly they use is white flour. And is, you know, are we able to produce white flour competitively? <laughs> and do we want to? Um, in New England and, and the Northeast, you know, can our farmers actually afford to do that and remain profitable? So I think there's a lot of questions to be answered around exactly what you're talking about in order for this whole system to, to actually work and be viable. I was going to say, the price in the end is what always ends up being the most important criteria for the market demand.
Oh, I, I, yeah, I should pass this on because Heather covered most of my points. I, I did want to add, though, that uh, Green Market is very interested in participating in this project because they've established a buy local program and and now require that people who are selling wheat based products meet their their local standards now what we're faced with what green market is faced with when i say we uh what green market is faced with is now they're they're limiting their existing the, the farmers who are, who are selling into the market and the and the uh, are the uh, the vendors, the bakers who are selling into the market, and they're they're having to deal with the shortage of supply that they that they need to make up. So getting getting the production. The other the other question is okay, we can find varieties that are adapted and suitable for the Northeast. Are people going to eat baked products made from those varieties? Yeah. I should say we're just about to wrap this up and um, the, the topic here has been about participatory breeding projects with farmers so I wanted to make sure if any of you had questions that pertained more to that and, and also point out that only about four or five people just signed up on the Ogren list. You can go to... Pardon? Okay, and if you uh, go to the website, it's just ogren.org, you can sign up yourself. But that will certainly be the way for any of you to participate in this. Heather, you actually brought up a point, very important point that I think is essential to this, and that's price versus price that a farmer needs to make money versus price that a customer is willing to pay. And uh, we were challenged two years ago in New York City when they did the tasting. Uh, I think it was, I think it was uh, one of the speakers anyway said, well, you, New York can't grow enough grain. The truth is New York could bury Manhattan in grain if they're willing to pay for it. The, the question is, you know, at what point can a farmer afford to grow it and at what point will the customer buy it? And especially oats, uh, we started to gear up and I actually cleaned some hollis oats to meet the demand, to, or to meet the quality demand. What we found out was they would love truckloads and truckloads of it at a quarter of the price, and <laughs> you know, and that and that's right. Not the rest of, yeah, six <laughs> yeah, and the actually the breeding comes into that though, finding var adapted varieties that cust that the markets want, and also it seems the price doesn't mean a thing if you're the only game in town. If you've got something that the customer wants and nobody else has it. They'll pay the price. <laughs> if they can afford it. <laughs> well, I think we are come to this end. Oh, we have one more? Okay. If you're all willing to spend a few more minutes here, we'll take one more comment or question. I'm just wondering, uh, we do want you want about paying the food. But wheat could, you could process like a pasta and other products like a, in case of rice. You can eat the brown rice, you can eat the white rice, you can eat the between the milling process, like half the way meal, and also you can process like a soy paste or rice wine. So I'm hearing only baked food right now. Is there any approach to looking for that other way to sell? About yeah. other product, other ways, yes. And we yeah. certainly have been selling more of some of these grains into distilleries and breweries that comes to mind. Uh, the project is focused on baking quality, but uh, bread and uh, pastries, which would be the soft wheat. Um, the the Amara and Einkorn, we are still limited by seed quantities. Uh, some of the farmers in France are making pasta out of emmer, which is close to Durham. Um, in some of its, it's, it's also a tetraploid, so it has similar proteins. To We're Durham. making pasta now. Okay. And then, yeah, okay. Uh, and then the, some distilleries in New York are using the soft wheat. But this project is mostly focused on different baked goods. Thank you all for coming and I want to 